One of the rabbits came back, and it was all messed up. It had the carrots coming through it. And this crazy woman had bought the rabbit. This woman was nuts. And she bought the rabbit, she returned it. And she goes, she comes in and she named the rabbit Bun Bun the Rabbit. But this woman talked like this. Here's Bun Bun. <laughs> oh shit. This is Bun Bun the Rabbit. We can no longer keep Bun Bun. Bun Bun is sick. And Bun Bun was actually pr hanging in pretty well. When rabbits are ailing, they'll sit in the corner of their cage and go, they're really bummed. I mean, you can really see the pain on their faces because they, they will pant like, oh, God, oh, fuck, being a rodent, it's got a metabolism, it's really fun. <laughs> and I, believe me, I know what it's like. So anyway, they bring in Bun Bun and me and me are trying not to laugh in this lady's face. Like, she looks away more like, <laughs> so she's got the cage with Bun Bun and like you know, the, the cedar shavings are falling all over the place and she's got these two kids who are like holding on to her leg and going, do we really have to give away Bun Bun? Honey, we can't keep Bun Bun. Please take Bun Bun back. I said, well, you know, the boss says there's no refunds. I can't give you any money. I don't want any money. I just want you to take good care of Bun Bun. We love Bun Bun. And the kid's like, we love Bun Bun. I'm like, okay. Well, okay, we'll take Bun Bun and see you later. And the, the two kids and the crazy woman leave. And so, uh, we're looking at we're contemplating Bun Bun. We're looking at Bun Bun, and I said, Ian? He said, yes. I said, upstairs, you know what's in the big python tank. He says, there's a big python. I said, yeah, I think the big python is hungry. And he goes, let's feed Bun Bun to the python. <laughs> All right! Because, hey, pythons have to eat too. So, I took Bun Bun, and this is going to sound a little hairy to you. I took Bun Bun out of the cage, put a ruler behind Bun Bun's neck, put Bun Bun's chin and head on the countertop, very hard. Bun Bun didn't know what the fuck was going on. I was like trying to get out. I grabbed Bun Bun behind the shoulders and went out and up and popped that neck. It's called a cervical snap and I killed Bun Bun's little rodent ass. Now there's some people in the crowd who bought that record, you know, tame yourself. What are you doing that for? Tame yourself. Me and Ted Nugent will someday make a record called Main Yourself and it'll be about chasing women, shooting guns, and eating hamburgers. Okay? So anyway, here's the reason why I offed Bun Bun. What would be better if you were Bun Bun? If I just kill your ass that fast or if I take you up live and kicking and throw you into a cage with a huge snake that's going to chase your scared ass around the cage for a good five minutes, bite you with teeth to your size ratio that are going to be about this big, grab you, squeeze you till shit comes out of you and your eyes bulge, and squeeze you till you die. That would take a good five minutes. Would you rather that happen or me just turn your lights up? So, I killed Bun Bun, and I'm about to take Bun Bun upstairs to feed him to Mr. Python. The door of the pet shop opens. It's the crazy lady and the two kids. Bun Bun goes behind my back. We change our minds. We want Bun Bun. What do you say? Ah. You know, you're not a rabbit person. You, <laughs> you are a goldfish person. Ian, she's a goldfish person. Ma'am, we will give you a bowl, three goldfish, free water, everything you need to have a goldfish. Rabbit person, you are not. You are into aquarium fish, and we're going to start you right away on it. Ian, why don't you take her upstairs and show her a wide array of feeder goldfish. I want Bun Bun. Where's Bun Bun? She was not going to leave. So, this is where a nine-to-five, horribly-paying job turns into art. <laughs> I hold out Bun Bun. Bun Bun is really dead. <laughs> oh my God, Bun Bun! Bun Bun! And I couldn't do that. It's an Australian sleeping Belgian rabbit. Would not work, because Bun Bun's neck is really broken, and there's some blood coming out of its nose, and, you know, well, it's dead. So anyway, it's really dead. And I'm like, um, here's Bun Bun. You want to just put him in the cage and you can just take him out of here? This woman was horrified. She hated my guts. 
And I just explained to her, well, you know, you bailed, and I figured the Python kid, she called me all these names and she left. And I never saw her again. I know, I'm a dick. <laughs> okay, look, here's something else, which I just remembered. We had these big fish tanks with goldfish that we would get for a nickel each. And a lot of big fish eat goldfish, like Oscars and Jack Dempsey's and piranhas. You put in three goldfish and like the, the product hey, kills it and eats it up. And so anyway, we had big tanks of goldfish because on Saturday people would come in for like 50 at a time, you know, you give them a big water bag full of goldfish. So anyway, goldfish were great for kids because they would come in and like for 25 cents they got a fish, you know, they go, wow, I got a fish in a bag, you know, they put it in a, you know, big, you know, mixing bowl and they have a fish and goldfish are amazingly hardy. They will survive an eight-year-old somehow. And my mom won't, but the fish will hang right in there. So anyway, the kid comes into the pet shop, I want a goldfish, and he and I take this young man right up to the goldfish department. And it's this huge tank with like 90 million goldfish in it, and there's this one white one. It's like swimming through the I want that white one! No, I don't see it. You see it? No, I don't see it. I just see a bunch of orange fish. Can you give me an orange fish? No, I want, the, I want that white one. What? You mean the one over there with the, the, the gash in his head? No, no, the white one. See? No, I'm just like staring the kid along. So five minutes until the kid's almost in tears. I want that one! That white one right there? Yes! <laughs> and so he fills the cup half full of water, and I take the net. And I make this big display of trying to catch this fish on which I can just eat it and catch. You know, and so I go, the kids on the edge of the sea and stretch to get this fish. And I got, ah! And I get the fish and I put it in the cup. White goldfish swimming around in the cup. I go, is that the one you want, kid? And he goes, that's it. That's the goldfish I want. Ian, that is probably the coolest goldfish I've ever seen. He goes, I hardly agree. That is a goldfish to be reckoned with, most certainly. And we went on and on about how bitch this goldfish was. And then he said, Henry, it's time. I said, okay. And I took the goldfish out of the little cup and I said, is this really the one you want, kid? And the goldfish is like, you know, in the air. And I'm like, this is a great goldfish. He's like, put it back in the water. I'm like, okay. Oh, and ate it. The kid goes screaming, running out of this place like someone lit his little ass on fire. It was great. The mom called. I don't know what you had going on in this place, but you should tell your two employees to grow up! Even at that young age, we knew we were bound for greatness.